Okay, so today I want to talk to you about what happens when the CT Tech pushes the send button on the modality and sends the CT images to PAX. And I think if we understand the actual mechanics of how that transfer happens, that will give us a much better understanding of what happens in a DICOM network. So the first thing that happens is the CT scanner contacts PAX and asks to make a connection. In DICOM language, a connection is called an association. This is the first half of the DICOM handshake step. The association request message contains the presentation context. It's kind of like making a phone call. So it dials the number and, uh, you know, waits for the other side to answer. Now the CT scanner has identified as the service class user and the, the PAX DICOM server has identified itself as the service class provider. This is the other half of the DICOM handshake. The PAX DICOM server agrees to the proposed presentation context. So now in, in our phone call metaphor, both sides of the phone call, everybody knows who is who and what their role is on the phone call. Now that the connection, the roles have been established, the CT scanner can ask PAX for what it really wants. Again, to think of this as a phone conversation, steps one and two are just the introductions. You wouldn't just call somebody up and say, hey, do this for me. The first, each party introduces themselves and acknowledges the other person, and then you can talk about what the real reason for the phone call is. So at this point, the CT says, hey, can you store these images for me? PAX says, sure, I'll take those images for you. Then the CT scanner sends the first data packet of the first image. Most images are broken down into four data packets. So it's going to send one packet, which is only one part of the first image. The PAX DICOM server performs the C store, and when it completes the C store, it sends a confirmation back to the CT scanner. Again, remember this is just the first data packet of the first image. We haven't even moved the whole image yet. After receiving confirmation, the CT scanner sends the next packet. And this goes back and forth until all four packets have crossed and you get one image, one image of a CT study into PAX. So, once the first image is moved, then the CT scanner will send a second C store request for the second image. Every image has its own C store request. That's important to remember. Let me say it again. Every image has its own C store request. So, sends the C store, says, PAX says, yes, I'll take it. CT scanner sends the first data packet. Once PAX stores the first data packet, it says, yeah, I got the first packet, send the next packet. And this goes back and forth until all four packets for the second image are into PAX. Then another C store comes out for the third image. This goes back and forth for every image. So if you're talking about 250 slices of a head CT, you're talking about 250 C store requests. You're talking about a thousand data packets. It's a very chatty conversation between the PAX.com server and the CT scanner. There's lots of talking back and forth about, it. send me the packet, yeah, I got the packet, send me the next packet, yeah, I got this packet, you know, back and forth, back and forth. After the last packet of the last image has been sent, the CT scanner says, okay, we're done. To use our phone call metaphor, this is the goodbye step. CT says, thanks for all the help, bye, I gotta disconnect. And PAX says, okay, we're out of here done both terminate their sides of the association and that's the end of the whole process so here's a visual representation of the whole sending a study to PAX process I hope this gives you a better understanding of the mechanics of how a study gets sent to PAX thanks for watching